Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. This is Kylie Morgan with Plug in America. Uh, we're going to wait a few more minutes, um, you know, until 9 a.m. to actually start. Um, but thank you again. And uh, so for everyone here who's here early, um, if you have any questions throughout the webinar, feel free to use the control panel. Um, there should be a drop down menu with questions and you can type in any questions you have. Uh, and we'll get to those at the end of the webinar. Hi everyone, just an update. I'm gonna, uh, your screen might change for a, a minute to a different screen, but don't worry, uh, you're fine and the webinar is still going on. And I'll switch back to the screen in just a minute. Mm -hmm. 
All right, everyone, uh, thank you for joining. We're going to get started now that it's 9.01. Um, so a reminder, uh, if anyone has any questions during the webinar, uh, please use the question panel on the, in your control panel on the right-hand side. Um, you should uh, see it as a drop-down menu, and uh, you'll be able to type in any questions you have during the webinar at, at any time. And then at the end of the webinar, uh, we'll look at those questions and answer as many as we can. <clears throat> All right, uh, so today I'm happy to be on the webinar with my co-presenters, Tim Benford uh, and Seneca Geese. And so uh, my name's Kylie and I'm the Assistant Program Manager at Plug in America. I manage National Drive Electric Week and Drive Electric um, Earth Day uh, for Plug in America, although we work with the Electric Auto Association and the Sierra Club uh, to put on the two campaigns every year. Uh, Tim? Well, hi everyone. I'm Tim Benford, a retired Royal Air Force Squadron leader and aerospace project manager whose retirement avocation is being president of the EAA's Drive Electric Dayton chapter and driving a red long range Tesla Model 3. Great, thank you, uh, Seneca. And uh, Seneca, I'm so sorry if I mispronounced your last name. Uh, feel free to correct oh, me. Oh, you're good. <laughs> All good. Thank you so much. Uh, Seneca Gisi here. Hi, everyone. Thanks for uh, having me. Um, I am a uh, nine-year Tesla veteran, uh, former employee number 126, so very early at the company. Uh, recently, well, I guess two years ago, departed to co-found Current Automotive, which is the nation's first online pre-owned EV retailer. Uh, think uh, CarMax meets Carvana, but for electric vehicles. And uh, happy to be here to share some insights. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, so, Tim, go ahead. Yeah, here's a, a screenshot of part of a Google Doc project plan template that I developed uh, based on Plug in America's City Captain's event task list. Uh, years of organizing projects of various kinds, including ride and drives, has taught me that you need to need a written plan to keep the event on the rails who is involved, what they've agreed to do, when and how they'll do it. It doesn't need to be wordy, but uh, just have the essentials, tasks, uh, dates and times listed. If you're a real project nerd, you could include task independences, but this template does not. It's just a chronological list. Your plan should be written in concert and shared with those involved in your event and Kylie will share with you a generic editable version of this template. Over to you, Kylie. Awesome, thanks so much. Uh, yeah, so if uh, you're interested in that template after uh, the webinar, my email will be at the end and you can email me. Uh, very soon though, we will be adding the template uh, and a another template to the Drive Electric Earth Day resources page. All right, uh, so go ahead, Tim, on the parking plan. Yeah, an important annex to your project plan should be a parking map uh, developed after you've done a site survey of the deed location. Uh, the mar uh, parking map should illustrate where your owner and dealer EVs will be parked and any food trucks attending. For example, this uh, site located between Oakwood High School and the football stadium in Oakwood, Ohio, has 34 numbered parking spaces. So. Since at our deed event we had a large food truck attending, we had to estimate the number of parking spaces it would consume, consume before we could uh, calculate how many EV owners and dealers to invite, with a few extra ones invited in case of dropouts. I uh, involved the Oakwood police lieutenant in our planning and he blocked the ends of our deed launch streets with cones, put up parking, no parking signs for our location and park here signs on adjacent streets for event parking for residents. The parking plan shows the direction for ride departures and indicates where the deed event tent is located. It should show pedestrian zone only zones too. Kylie. And uh, as you can imagine, it's important not to let pedestrians and event EVs come into contact with each other. So you should team up with, if appropriate, the local police chief 
for help to provide cones, parking and no parking signs. In our event location, in this photo, opposite Oakwood High School, the school normally parks its fleet of Suburbans in line astern on the opposite side of the road. Uh, our friendly police lieutenant had agreed to have the Suburbans moved to a parking lot during our event and then move them back again. One year, he forgot about our event, which reminds me not to assume everyone will remember their commitments and to gently remind them, but also to plan for contingencies. In this case, our way to mitigate the risk of backing into the Suburbans was to remind all EV owners and dealers to be careful when reversing. Note that it's a best practice to nominate event volunteers to monitor the departing EV rides and where they re-enter the event location in order to prevent collisions. Kylie. Awesome, thank you so much. All right, so here we have an example of uh, a route. So uh, it's a good idea to provide a suggested uh, route to dealerships and EV owners that are giving rides. Uh, and it's good to provide this both before the event and during the event. If you provide a map like this uh, in advance of the event, then dealerships and EV owners will have a chance to drive the route beforehand and identify any changes they want to make due to construction or other obstacles. Uh, and also, you can act anyone can make a map like this uh, just by taking a screenshot of Google Maps, uh, and it, you know you can add the arrows yourself. Uh, so it's a very DIY map. Uh, we also recommend using t-shirts, badges, or other signs to clearly indicate volunteer staff that have been approved to give rides in their vehicle. Um, easily identifiable volunteer staff are a great resource for attendees who aren't sure where to find something at the event. Um, you know, so yeah, again, it's good to have people who can direct people to where to get to the vehicle to ride or where to get food, uh, you know, or where to get more information about EV. Uh, also good to identify a safe exit and entrance uh, using signage to indicate where vehicles will be, you know, constantly driving through. Um, and, you know, you want to make sure that that signage is clear to both drivers and pedestrians. Um, you know, if it's too small for a driver to see, they may be confused about, you know, where to enter and exit. Uh, also, it's really good to use barriers or signs to indicate uh, pedestrian walkways and pedestrian-only zones. For example, if you have a food truck or information table at the event, um, you can make that area a pedestrian-only zone. Next, we recommend using mostly right-hand turns uh, to make the driving easier and safer. And as Tim mentioned, uh, it's really important to have a safety monitor in the test drive area uh, just to make sure everyone's staying safe. All right, uh, so we have another example of a test drive route, and this one actually shows an area uh, where drivers can legally reach speeds of 55 miles per hour, and you can see it's that yellow strip of road there. Um, and uh, yeah, we're just showing this because uh, when possible, uh, it is really nice to allow passengers to safely experience um, a real EV driving experience as, a as opposed to just riding around in a parking lot you know, only going, you know, like 10 miles per hour. Um, also, if you keep each test drive to a 10 minutes or less, then you'll be able to provide about four rides per hour. Uh, so, and if you have um, someone standing at the entrance or exit, you know, where vehicles are, are going through, uh, you can also track how many passengers you have in each vehicle or, um, you know, passengers versus people actually driving vehicles if you have dealerships offering test drives. And this is a really good metric to track because you can show this to dealerships the following year uh, and show them what a good sales opportunity your event is and convince them to attend. Uh, and actually, in order, to track, uh, in order to track this metric, Plug in America usually positions a staff member at either the entrance or the exit, and they just have a clipboard with a list of uh, the vehicles available to drive, and then they tally how many passengers are in each vehicle, and if you're allowing uh, people to drive the vehicles, um, you know, how many drivers. All right. 
And uh, another note is that although EV owners can offer rides in their vehicles, uh, we do recommend inviting local dealers to provide vehicle attendees with an actual driving experience. Uh, dealerships have the proper insurance for this and they do it all the time. So um, they're the ones who can provide a full test drive. Uh, also, Tim has a, a nice anecdote that I thought would be really helpful. Oh, yes. I've forgotten what it is, Kylie. <laughs> oh, no worries. Um, so this was about the uh, servicing center or business that wanted to use their lot to test drives while they were open, and it, it, it presented kind of an unsafe situation that you had to decline. Oh, that's right, yeah. Yeah, it was a, um, uh, one of our members was a, a hybrid service center owner, and he really was very keen to have a ride and drive on his premises. But when we looked into it, when we met, his wife was very insistent that uh, it would happen during uh, normal working hours. And that uh, meant that uh, EV rides and drives would be conflicting with customers going in and out of this uh, hybrid service center. And uh, that conflict sounded too dangerous to me, so we, we just had to decline and say no. Sometimes you just have to work, walk away. Thank you. Yeah, and um, you know, I wanted to share this because uh, it's a really good point that if you feel something is unsafe, um, you know, don't be afraid to, you know, not to do it. Uh, it's better to be safe than to do an EV test drive experience um, that could could cause an accident. All right, um, so this next slide is just some general event safety tips. Um, as we've been saying, clear signage is really important. Um, you know, you can have safety monitors patrolling the area, um, but they're more of uh, an extra help. Uh, you know, clear signage is the best way uh, to avoid any accidents or uh, in the first place. Also, you want to avoid events where alcohol is being served, um, you know, because this just really limits your ability uh, to ensure that e each EV owner or, you know, drives that are going on are safe. Uh, you know, even if a passenger is the one who's consumed alcohol, uh, they may uh, be a distraction to the driver. Uh, also, if you have static display vehicles at the event, um, you'll want to remain, ask them to remain parked all day uh, because it's difficult to, you know, have a moving vehicle going through a crowd of attendees. And also, you know, you want to avoid setup and tear down while attendees are present uh, because you might have tent poles and uh, and tables and lots of you know big equipment being used that could uh, harm a, someone who's walking by. Uh, also, if you have small children running around, you know they may not know to stay away from someone who's setting up a tent. Uh, also, I would really encourage everyone to check out the Drive Electric Earth Day resources page. Uh, this page has uh, a lot more whole detailed section on safety uh, for both small events and large events. All right, so uh, we can help with insurance for your event. Uh, if you are an individual organizing an event, um, Plug in America can provide uh, general event insurance. Um, if you are organizing the event on behalf of another organization, uh, we're not able to offer it, unfortunately. Um, but so if you're co-locating with another event, that's kind of the benefit is they may have insurance themselves, and so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, for Plug in America, at least, the insurance that we provide uh, does not cover test drives, owner ride-alongs, um, or, you know, any injuries that happen associated with that vehicle. Um, so you're going to want to make sure that if you have EV owners giving rides, they have personal insurance for their personal vehicles, and that's what would cover that the EV rides activity. Um, and so they should be providing you with a, a proof of insurance for their vehicle, and um, you know they should look into it and just make sure that uh, giving rides to people is, you know, reasonably covered by their insurance. Uh, if you have dealers providing test drives, then again they should provide their own insurance for that activity. Uh, also, if you are an Electric Auto Association member, they have their own insurance policy that uh, can cover you, and Tim is going to talk about that right now. 
Yeah, the EAA can provide its chapters with a certificate of insurance for the event host or co-sponsor. It's a third party liability insurance, which covers the event premises for fire and other damage and members for accidents, but it does not cover libel, slander, or physical attacks upon someone by an EAA member, nor does it, nor any form of damage caused by improper representation made in any form of advertising, and automobiles are not covered. Chapters must email or call the EAA's insurance agent at least two weeks in advance of the event for their event to be covered. However, in Dayton, we're especially spoiled because in addition to EAA's event insurance, nonprofit Drive Electric Ohio can provide us with a certificate of insurance to cover owners' vehicles at the event as well. Kylie. Awesome, thank you. Um, yeah, and just a note that if you have any uh, exhibitors or vendors, you know, like a food truck at your event, they should be providing their own insurance. Um, you know, generally event insurance covers the, the general event space and any accidents that occur there, um, but you really want all the participants to be bringing their own insurance if possible. Um, yeah, however, if necessary, you know, please just email me if you have any questions, any other questions about that. Um, also, if you are a Sierra Club chapter, uh, I believe they do provide some insurance assistance. All right, uh, Tim, do you want to talk a little bit about getting the word out? Sure. Letting uh, people know about your event is obviously critical to it, to success. And these days, there are a myriad, a myriad ways of getting the word out. Uh, this is a photo of a Dayton Daily News article written by a reporter after he'd interviewed me. So your local paid city newspaper and perhaps your free neighborhood newspaper are easier, easy media outlets to use. And spending uh, time getting to know their reporters that cover automotive will bear fruit. You or a volunteer can always prepare an article for them yourself, too. And then there are your non-traditional news outlets, such as your local blogger, to engage with. Where I live, uh, friend Charlie C uh, Campbell curates the It's Great in Dayton blog. He always publishes, he'll always publish a link to our next event and his blog reaches uh, 7,000 people. In addition, there are many free websites that publish local events. One excellent example in Dayton is DaytonAction.com. And of course, make the most of your Facebook, Instagram pages, and your YouTube uh, channel. And further, you can thank event supporting dealerships in your articles with their permission. Kylie. Awesome, thanks so much. Um, yeah, and just a reminder that uh, Drive Electric Earth Day events that are occurring during the month of April and you know are registered on driveelectricearthday.org will receive press contacts by email from us um, closer to April. And we usually provide a list for every US state um, just to help promote your event. All right, Tim. The uh, chapter check-in table or tables with or without a pop-up tent is uh, multi-purpose. It is typically staffed with EV owner experts and serves as a gathering point for volunteer owners and dealers to check in when they first arrive to validate drivers' licenses and insurance for those attendees intending to drive an owner's EV, if that is available, to have all attendees planning to ride or drive to sign a liability waiver to ensure state child seat laws are obeyed and you can visit uh, safekids.org for details and hand out a ticket to ride in a specific EV at a specific time. Further, the event staff can register attendees and their event ride or drive wishes, administer pre and post ride surveys where applicable and provide EV educational handouts from Plug in America, the EAA, and the C Sierra Club. Kylie. Great, thank you. All right, Tim. This slide <laughs> takes me back to April 1965 when the Beatles published this song, only to reemerge today as a ticket to ride at Deed events. 
The point is to devise some process to match event attendees with the EVs and owners they wish to drive with in advance of their doing so. The ticket to ride tickets can be procured using a Staples appointment card template. Then as the rider checks in at the event table and their name, EV choices and ride or drive times are written onto a clipboard list, or maybe these days entered into an iPad, their choices can be added to the ticket to ride and given to them. An alternative pro uh, process is to give them a time to report in for a ride or drive, and they can hop into whatever EV is available at that time. Keeping rides to a tight schedule isn't always possible, but having some form of control system will help keep tempers cool, Kylie. Great, thank you. Um, yeah, and one suggestion it, uh, that Plug in America has used is if you want to keep the ride and drive process moving smoothly, um, you can assign people times to ride, um, but not assign them a specific vehicle, um, so that when they show up at their assigned time, um, they can just choose from whatever vehicle is available. And yeah, that usually has proven to be an efficient use of their time, and you know they can always wait um, if they want to ride or drive a specific vehicle. All right, uh, so next we have liability waivers. So these are really important for your event um, because as I explained before, event insurance generally only covers um, accidents in the general event space and will not cover the EV test drive or ride activities. Um, so EV owners giving rides and dealers should provide their own insurance. Um, but you know we do recommend having all drivers and riders sign a, li a liability waiver that includes the names of all the event organizers, partners, and sponsors. Um, if you'd like a template, please email me, uh, and very soon the template will also be added on the Drive Electric Earth Day resources page, so you'll be able to just download that yourself at any time. All right, uh, so next. So as the event organizer, um, it's really important to screen each driver and get to know them beforehand. Only let people you trust offer rides to the public and ask for proof of insurance for their vehicle. Um, it might also be helpful to provide EV owners with a script they can use while driving attendees. Uh, you know, remind them that these events are meant to be fun and educational rather than a sales pitch. Um, the EV owners are welcome to provide specifics about their EV model, uh, but they should also be prepared to talk about other EVs that might work better for different attendees. Uh, you know, for example, not everyone is quite ready to buy a fully electric vehicle, and plug-in hybrids might be a good starting point for some people. Uh, it's also good to watch out for attendees with keychains or other objects that might harm the vehicles they ride in, and uh, just ask if they can store them in a pocket or purse during the ride. Um, you know, the thing to remember, uh, obviously, is that these vehicles are people's personal vehicles, so, you know, we want attendees and uh, and, you know, we, of course, want to be respectful of that and make sure their vehicles come out safe at the end of it, come out in good condition at the end of it. All right. Uh, so since your event will probably include both display vehicles and vehicles being used to give rides, um, you know, it's good to think about ways you can identify drivers. So if you don't have a budget for t-shirts, uh, you can consider using paper signs, uh, volunteers, or even just dedicated parking spaces to create an area that's clearly uh, where the test drive vehicles are. Uh, whatever you decide, always keep safety in mind, and uh, it's good practice to mentally run through the event activities uh, from the perspective of both a driver and an attendee. All right, uh, so with when recruiting local dealerships, uh, in-person visits can be really effective because you can ask around and find out the best person to speak with. Sometimes the general manager uh, can help and will just send any salesperson on the day of the event with a vehicle. Other times there's an individual salesperson who's really passionate about electric vehicles and will take some time off the sales floor to attend the event with the vehicle. Um, but, you know, remember that they um, are still there as a salesperson from the dealership. And essentially, this is an event where they're hoping to get leads. 
to, to sell their vehicle, uh, even though it is an educational event. Um, so it's uh, really important to explain and pitch, you know, why this event is worth your time and worth uh, getting off the sales floor. All right. Uh, so when you go to the dealership, make sure to bring a flyer about your event, um, including information about expected attendance, uh, contact information, and how your event is an excellent opportunity for the dealership to find sales leads. Uh, you can then follow up with some phone calls and emails asking if they need more information. If they confirm they can attend, uh, it's really crucial to confirm their participation the week of the event and the day before the event. Uh, their, inventory, uh, their inventory changes often, so even though they confirm they can attend a month before the event, uh, they may no longer have that vehicle the day before. Or they, uh, they may you know, be really busy and suddenly not be able to attend. Also, be prepared to encounter some resistance, especially in non-DEV states. Uh, you may have to educate them on electric vehicles and how your event is a great way to connect to an interested audience uh, of, possi of possible buyers. Uh, another option is to approach used EV dealerships. Uh, so if you have any used EV lots around, uh, they may have <clears throat> an inventory of electric vehicles. And again, you'll want to pitch to them why your event is a great fit and, um, and you know, just pitch them, uh, you know, be prepared to educate them about the vehicle because they may not know much about the uh, electric driving side of it. All right. Uh, also, local dealerships should provide you with proof of insurance, even if they're not providing test drives. Uh, and so we will talk a bit more about used EVs uh, in the webinar and uh, Seneca will talk more about that. All right, so uh, Plug in America recently launched an online EV dealer training. Uh, if you have any local dealers that you've connected with for your events in the past, uh, you know, we, it'd be great if you can let them know about this if they're interested. Uh, essentially, it's a national online training course for dealers, and uh, we partnered with James Madison University. And it, it will train them on how to be, you know, an effective EV specialist, uh, provides them with training on the fundamentals of EVs as a product category. Uh, it gets them familiar with EV charging, you know, the type, um, as well as common questions that come up about it. Uh, also provides some information on uh, federal, state, and local purchase incentives. Uh, so if you have any questions about this or uh, you want to refer any dealer, uh, you can refer them to that email there, dealers at pluginamerica.org, um, or you can also just email me and I'll connect you with the right person. All right, so uh, food trucks are a great way to encourage people to have lunch and stay longer at your event. If you have the budget, you can consider doing a raffle for one or more free lunches uh, for people who test drive or ride in a vehicle. Um, also, watch out for, you know, some food trucks require a minimum number of sales or a deposit in order to show up at an event. Um, you know, especially in a city like uh, Los Angeles, where there's lots of events and lots of opportunities um, for, them, uh, for them to get customers. You'll really have to pitch them on, you know, why your event is a good fit, and it, uh, reassure them that your event will have enough attendees uh, uh, for, you know, to really sell enough meals with their food trucks. And, you know, as always, it's really keeping track of metrics is just a really good practice for marketing your event to potential sponsors, and in this case, uh, food trucks for the next year. If you can keep track of attendees and even take lots of photos to show proof of all the attendees at your event. That'll go a long way when you're trying to recruit uh, exhibitors and food trucks. All right, Tim. Well, EV enthusiasts don't, uh, don't need much excuse to meet socially and celebrate. And there's no better excuse than concluding a successful deed event. It's time to sit around the dinner table at your favorite hostelry and join a chin wag Enjoy a chin wag about EVs and thank all your volunteers and partners. Make sure the hostelry has nearby level two charging points or 
some members may have a spot of range anxiety and not attend. In Dayton, uh, we favor the Bricks Ice House restaurant downtown for its proximity to Tesla destination and charge point chargers. Don't forget to write those bread and butter letters, as we used to call them in the RAF, to thank the dealers and your volunteers and sponsors, sponsors that helped you with the event, Kylie. Great, thank you. All right, uh, so this slide is about relationships and just how important uh, they are to maintaining your and growing your events. Uh, Tim? Yeah, as you grow uh, your informal group of EV, EV enthusiasts or your EAA chapter, the more relationships you can develop, the faster you will achieve your goals. A story to illustrate. As a Tesla Model 3 reservationist in 2016, I started a Model 3 Owners of Dayton Facebook page in 2017. It was discovered by the outreach manager at Drive Electric Ohio, and I was encouraged to start Drive Electric Dayton. Three years later, we have the support of 524 EV enthusiasts owning 233 EVs, including 136 Teslas. Among the most fruitful relationships we've built over that time have been with other EV support organizations such as Clean Fuels Ohio and the Electric Auto Association, our local EV selling dealers, local city council officials, and nearby EV and green groups. Most recently, we've got to know the new sustainability manager of Dayton, with whom we've, we're organizing a 50th anniversary deed event in April. So work at those relationships and you'll find literally one thing just leads to another. Kylie. Awesome, thank you so much. Yeah, that's a great example. All right, uh, so next uh, we're gonna introduce Seneca and he's gonna talk about current automotive and how to incorporate used EVs into your event or test drive experience. Hey, thanks Kylie. Um, yeah, um, Current Automotive was, was started uh, in an effort to educate folks on electric vehicles. Um, you know, there's a ton of misinformation out there. We wanted to set the record straight. Um, and, you know, a lot of the common questions uh, for folks that are new to electric vehicles center around range, uh, battery longevity, and uh, charging. So, um, you know, being prepared for those common questions such as, how, how far can it go? How long does it take to charge? How long will the battery last? Uh, and, and what we find is um, that people are pleasantly surprised that the batteries are under warranty from the manufacturer for uh, eight years. Uh, I don't know of any other uh, EV produced today that is not uh, have its battery warranted for less than eight years. Um, and, and so that's a pleasant surprise for most people. But uh, I think there's this, there's this general uh, misconception that a battery needs to be replaced after say three years or five years um, and it's uh, generally reassuring to most people considering an electric vehicle that these are engineered for uh, long long life okay. um, with electric vehicles people generally have never experienced uh, what it's like to ride in one or let alone drive one. Uh, and you can tell people about an electric vehicle till you're blue in the face, but until you get them behind the wheel or as a passenger, uh, they won't truly understand. Uh, and that's why the ride alongs or test drives are so important at these events uh, to get people talking about EVs and uh, the benefits uh, of them. Um, <clears throat> the Benefits go beyond uh, saving money at the pump. Uh, and, uh, you, know, you know, I think a lot of folks are surprised at how smooth electric vehicles drive, lack of vibration, lack of noise. Uh, and it's generally very pleasant uh, to drive an electric car. Um, and one of our suggestions at these events is to have owners uh, share their experience of the total cost of ownership. Um, you know, not just what they save at the pump, but also, uh, you know, the cost of their time in saving, um, you know, trips to the pump, uh, for example, or the inconvenience of that. Uh, and share re real world experiences of uh, times where they did have to charge in public, but, uh, you know, maybe 
uh, highlight that it was a, a short stop and not necessarily sitting there for hours. Uh, one of the biggest things that people uh, struggle with considering an EV is that their home is their primary charging station. Uh, come home, plug in, wake up every day fully charged. So you're leaving your home every day with a full charge and not uh, having to stop somewhere and charge in the public. Although there are certain urban dwellers who live in apartments and condos, um, and there are solutions there too. Okay. Um, benefits of used EVs, I and mean, this is what we do every day. Um, the uh, cost of a new EV uh, is generally high because of the investment cost that the uh, manufacturer needed to invest in battery technology. You know, for example, the Fiat on the screen generally retails for around $33,000 brand new, but pre-owned, they're around 10 to 11,000. Uh, so much more affordable, and that's with low mileage on the cars and still with tons of warranty coverage available. Um, and we like to say that purchasing a used EV is, is like recycling uh, a vehicle. Um, you know, these are designed for, uh, you know, beyond eight to 10 years of use uh, without having to replace the battery. Um, and again, that surprises a lot of people, again, thinking, you know, battery uh, and, and uh, I guess their experiences with other consumer products that, uh, you know, like a phone, for example, where the battery degrades over a shorter period of time. Um, and the biggest thing is uh, outside the Zev states, um, you know, having uh, these cars available uh, where they're not sold brand new. And that's it. Awesome, thank you so much. All right, uh, so now I'm just gonna run through uh, some general resources that are available to all events that are registered on the Drive Electric Earth Day website. Um, so we have lots of templates on the resources page. Uh, if you your event is registered on the Drive Electric Earth Day uh, website, and it's scheduled to occur during the month of April, uh, then we can provide you with event kits that include uh, EB educational materials and a banner. Uh, and these are at no cost to you. Uh, we also send out press contacts, again, to events on the website during April. Uh, we have social media tips uh, for, you know, kind of templates you can use uh, for posts, uh, as well as what channels to tag and hashtags to use. You know, we have webinars like this uh, on educational webinars. Uh, also, if you're having trouble finding EV owners to display vehicles at your event, uh, you can reach out to uh, Plug in America or the Electric Auto Association, and we're happy to reach out to our EV owner network and try to find some volunteers. Uh, we also have an extensive uh, page of safety tips on the resources page. And if you are a new Electric Auto Association chapter, um, I believe you can get a feather flag. Uh, and Tim, uh, do you want to just say a few words about the uh, EV Event Coordinator's Handbook? Yeah, the EAA's 10-page EV Event uh, Coordinator's Handbook is uh, a fabulous guide to organizing a successful EV test drive event. And uh, it's filled with strategies, tips, lists, photos, links to useful websites, and uh, some example templates. It's available to EAA members via our electricauto.org website. Awesome, thank you. Uh, and uh, if you are interested in having a Nissan Leaf at your event for test drives, um, we do have a, a Nissan Leaf contact. If you go to driveelectricweek.org, resources page and then under Nissan sponsorship uh, you'll find an email you can use. Um, as you know, as people may know, Nissan LEAF is the exclusive sponsor of National Drive Electric Week, um, so they do provide this contact for that campaign. All right, so next steps. Uh, if you're interested in registering uh, a DEED event, you can visit the website, uh, and find an event near you. Uh, make sure there's you know, none near you before you register it. Uh, and you know, if not, then you can register one. And I'll go over the steps for that in a couple slides. Uh, you can also sign up to join Sierra Club, Electric Auto Association, or Plug in America. Uh, so if you want to register an event, um, it, it is a 
you know, there are a few steps involved. So just to clarify it, uh, you would go to the volunteer tab. Uh, you'd put your name and your email. Uh, then you would put your country, state, and city. And when you do that, you'll see a list of nearby events. Uh, and then you can scroll all the way down past those events and see a button to register your event. All right, so any questions, feel free to email myself or Guy Hall at the Electric Auto Association. Um, I'm also going to look at the question panel and see what questions we have from the audience. Uh, okay, so what permits and insurance requirements are needed to hold an EV car show? And do these change if we want to do test drives? Um, so permitting depends on the city. Um, if you, you know, you're holding an event that requires you to close off public streets or use public streets, like if you're doing a parade of electric vehicles, um, you know, uh, doing a parade from one location to your actual event, which is maybe in a parking lot, uh, then it's always better safe than sorry to check with the city, let them know what's happening, and, and see if you need any permits. Um, also, if you get to know your city officials, uh, you'll probably find that you can uh, do much bigger things in following years if you want to, um, because they'll be able to help you out. And uh, yes, if you want to do test drives, um, you know, you'll still need that general event insurance, but you'll also need insurance from the dealerships and uh, proof of insurance from any EV owners that are giving rides in their vehicles. Uh, we also have a note that someone has worked with the League of Women Voters to get events into small newspaper calendars. Um, so that's another resource for everyone. Uh, oh, and a good note here. So in states where a particular EV model uh, may not be sold legally, it may be better to emphasize that these are demonstration vehicles rather than test drives. Um, so, and yeah, it may, it may also be helpful to place a not for sale sign on these sample vehicles. Uh, so that's a really good point. You know, if these vehicles are hard to find in your area and someone, you know, drove it from out of state, um, you'll want to let attendees know that these are only avail available in used lots or in other states. Uh, also, great question. Is it okay to invite an electrician who installs charging stations? Um, that is a great person to invite to your event. Uh, at Plug in America's events, we have lots of questions about, you know, if an EV will raise their electricity bill through the roof, um, you know, how will they install a charging station in the garage, things like that. So an electrician is a great person to have at your event. Okay, uh, so that looks like all we have today. Um, so I think we're going to end it here unless uh, Guy or sorry, uh, Seneca or Tim, do you have anything else you want to add? Well, in addition to um, an electrician, we've actually invited uh, a solar installer to an event and uh, he's got a lot of questions because, of course, the next thing, once you're powering your vehicle with uh, electricity, is to figure out ways of getting it uh, free from the sun. Awesome, yeah, that's really, uh, that pairs well with a lot of, with EVs, definitely. Okay, well that's it. So uh, we, I will post the recording of this webinar and the slides on the Drive Electric Earth Day resources page um, soon, if not next week, then the week after. Uh, so look out for that. And I'll also email the recording to everyone who registered, um, so you'll get it that way as well. Thank you so much for attending, and I hope everyone has a great day.